live now. Alright. Hey guys, I'm gonna do some QA on some questions we had from yesterday. Uh, driving down to Birmingham, teaching Spartan right now. So if you are watching and you have questions or anything like that, or just want to say hi, pop in. Otherwise, let's do the QA. Alright. Back. What workouts do you recommend outside of Jiu Jitsu? I don't do any workouts outside of Jiu Jitsu. Literally, the only thing I do is Jiu Jitsu. So, I'm the wrong guy for that question. I'm sorry. I know that sounds ridiculous, but it's true. That's key. It is. It's, it's definitely true. Um, best way to rehab turf toe while rolling? Oh, dude. That stinks. Play your guard. If you're doing stuff on top, the top pressure that causes that big toe to push back, you know, like that, where you're driving into the floor, that's going to be really hard. If you're hard passing, just work on your guard for a while. That's a, that's one of those injuries. It's like, man, it really isn't like the worst injury, but it stops you from doing so much. If you want to be alone. So that's a bummer. It's kind of like having a Triangle choke anyone in history, who would it be? I don't know. I would have to go with uh, Snuffleupagus from Sesame Street. not about the farmers. I am fully aware. It's not about the farmers. It's not about the farmers. Thoughts on DDS and the no-gi scene? Oh, the DDS guys are great. The no-gi scene is bigger and better and more skilled than ever. Um, I do Triangle choke from guard defense and attack tutorial. Just how to defend a triangle choke? Um, triangle choke from guard defense, yes. And attack. So they want to know how to hit it too. Thanks, son. Give it, uh, give it all away. Yeah, I can help you guys with that. But uh, you for sure should be on my website. There's stuff there right now. It's uh, www.brandonmc.ninja. So there's some stuff on there that well, it's five bucks a month right now. Actually, on January the 31st, it bumps up. The price bumps up. So, not for an existing member. So, if you want to get in on it while well, it's, and like keep the five dollar a month price, you need to do it before January 31st. Otherwise, you're gonna you're gonna miss out. Defensive player mostly. Good leg locks. What should I add to my game? Um, guard passing. You may already have decent guard passing, but if you say that you're a defensive player, I hear that that means that you're, you do a good job. Of 
keeping guys off of you from the bottom. So, not surviving. <clears throat> not a good job surviving. That's a different thing. That's the base skill to defense. But that's only one part of defense. Not having to survive is good defense. But anyway, uh, I'm guessing that if that's your game, then your guard passing is behind. I could be assuming. sweep this way opens up a sweep this way when it's defended, you know, that kind of 
of stuff, but mostly you need to be underneath your opponent or under a sales floor. Best submission artist in the UFC. How do you keep your jujitsu from growing stagnant? I just work on whatever I want to do every day. That's all I'm concerned about. Uh, I don't care if they're these days, that's how I do it. Just show up. Like the thing that excites me and makes me want to study and makes me want to train, that's the thing I put my attention to. And if my attention shifts, you know, or I start becoming interested in this part of the game, I just follow that. So I just follow whatever interests that I have. Now if my, man, maybe this is weird. I, I guess it is weird, but like my interest in jujitsu doesn't really wane. It's just gotten worse and worse over the years. Um, my interest in a particular path, my interest in training hard means, but my interest in studying jujitsu has never faltered. Uh, maybe it will. white belt and I love no gi training but my coach is training only gi for the past few weeks should I train without a gi should I go without a gi to the lessons or with the gi I mean is, it, is the gi required in the class then definitely with the gi um, I would also ask you how long you've been training if you've only been training you know a couple of months or one or two years you should just do whatever your coach wants you to do because he probably knows a lot better than you. Just about the game, you know what I'm saying? I'm not saying, I don't think the key is either necessary or unnecessary. I just think it's uh, an outfit that some people wear in class. So, anyway. The Velociraptor. Uh, Camp Maywood. Velociraptor from Camp. Oh, the praying mantis. Says this it's is not a velociraptor. Says this is praying mantis. Becca Duncan. Becca Duncan, what's up, Becca? Uh, no, it's a praying mantis, not a velociraptor. That's, that threw me off. Alright, let's see here. This guy wants a seminar in Dublin. Yeah, I should be back in Ireland uh, probably this summer. to avoid the triangle. Posture. <laughs> that's a terrible answer. It's the best answer though. You just that's that's a answer that's very simple but requires years of work. But it's the right answer. If you're getting triangle choked, your posture's poor. So there's a problem with your posture. Look to solve. You could look to fix this, fix this, fix this, fix this. That's fine. Maybe your defense will get better. You'll learn a lot. But the problem is not those things. Those things are symptoms of the problem. The problem is your posture. Fix your posture. Here's a good one. Why don't you try UFC? Seminar. Yeah, dude, I would love to come to Greece. Yeah, again, I'm coming to Europe in you know, this year. So hit me up in the DMs, dude. That would be awesome. I would love to come to Greece. Same guy that was looking for triangle help says he's looking for a good way of passing guard. And you said they needed posture. Okay. So I just gave him one more. He needs help passing guard? Yes. All right. You're not going to like my answer. You ready? Posture. That's my answer. You 
watch your dark passing to get better. Work on your posture. Alright. Yeah, I mean, you're worried about getting triangled all the time. You can't pass the guard while you're getting triangled. Work on that posture. When are you coming to Florida again? person's looking for like your objective when you start a role says I'm always a bit lost as to what I should try to go for yeah that's the problem to me that's the problem there's nothing you're supposed to go for the first thing you're doing is controlling the gripping and the inside space from the bottom or from the top if I'm on the bottom I'm looking to direct it to the side that I like it to go to like, okay, we're going to play the guard passing game. Well, we're going to do it over here where I'm comfortable. You know what I mean? Just moving to the hip and forcing him to come this way. Uh, with most people, that's plenty. With most people, that's plenty. Uh, of course, as you get better and better, you know, you're going to face better people that um, create different problems for you. So you need better answers to that as you continue to improve. But if you're still worried about how do I get started? It feels weird. I don't know what to do. Control the Break the grip and establish your own grip of some variety. Your feet can be used for grips too. Your feet are grips, his feet are grips. Break the grip, establish your own grip, and start to fight for dominance of the inside position, whether it's with your feet or with your arms or with your head on the inside, or you're looking to spin underneath and get into your deep half kind of games, whatever. On the top, it's the same thing. If he grips you, break his grip. Regrip him, start to dominate the inside space, stay hunkered low. I'm not pushing forward because now I'm off balance. I have opportunities to be off balance. I'm settling into my position, dropping my hips, and I'm looking to bury in, dominate the inside space, underhook on this side, beat this knee, turn that far shoulder to the ground, and start to flatten him into a half. And if I can flatten him into a half, I'm going to beat you. Can your wife beat you up? Yes, sometimes. I wish it wasn't true. But she's very This is the second or third question. Thoughts on weight training in jujitsu for jujitsu? What's the best way to escape from side control? Inside space and what that means exactly. www.brandonmc.ninja. It's all over my website. All over. Like there's probably there's probably two hours worth of content just of me talking about that principle on the website. Also, just uh, I was gonna say listen to podcasts, but you don't want to hear it necessarily without seeing it if you don't have an idea what the space means. So yeah, I mean it would be hard for me to describe to you. Right? a month until the end of the month. So do it, man. You can spend five you can spend five dollars. That the answer to that question I promise you is worth more than five dollars. So the answer is there a hundred percent. Is the rear naked choke still king?
triangle choke takes a lot of mastery. Rear naked choke, obviously, there's there's levels, but it's easy to understand. Wrap his neck, put that one behind his head. So yeah, the rear naked choke is key. Yeah. Everybody at every belt level knows how to do it and has some idea of how to get there. So, how do you stay motivated for jujitsu daily, and how do you deal with frustration? struggle to stay motivated about jiu-jitsu. And I know that that makes me strange. I got to of that. Now, frustrations, I do deal with. Them. I do. And I got a booger. It's itching me so bad. Ugh. I want to pick my nose in front of you guys, but... Ugh. Okay. What were we talking about? Frustrations in jiu-jitsu. Frustrations. Yeah, I do get frustrated, of course. But that's more like I get frustrated with my performance or my lack of understanding. When I really get frustrated is when something, I learn something that's been in front of me. It's so simple and it's been right in front of my face for five years, ten years. And I'm like, oh my God, how stupid are you? Like that frustrates me actually more than anything. Injuries is the biggest frustration. But... motivation to work hard I lose motivation sometimes to uh, you know like push and do my best work but I never lose motivation to show up and just get the job done I built a habit early on of listen man when it's time for class I show up that's what I do I'm the kind of person who shows up and I know that there's just going to be ups and downs through that so I don't get too excited about the ups. I don't get too excited about the downs. You know, just push through. It's an everyday journey. Man. I guess that's my answer. It doesn't Who cares? Just wake up and get to work. Body. It's kind of a... I, I know that that kind of answer is... Um, it's almost like a cheap out. But do it anyway. But it's the right answer. Like, it doesn't matter how you how you feel is totally irrelevant. The job needs to get done. And if the job, if you don't do the job of making your jujitsu better, nobody else is gonna do it, so the job won't get done. So do you want the job to get done? You gotta wake up and do it. That's just all there is to it. You can't pay somebody else to give you that skill. You can't have somebody else do the work for you. Wake up, get to work, let's go. That's all there is to it. That's it. Body triangle or hooks when you have the back? Body triangle. But I like the hooks. Uh, each has its own utility. But if you're telling me I'm in a position in which I can choose the body triangle, I will always choose it. Sometimes it's not an option because the, a, a lot of times it's not an option because the way that you have the back control is better because my hips are here instead of here or whatever. But if I'm in a position where I can lock the body triangle properly, I always will. Always. What did you do before going full time with BJJ? I waited tables. Was the last thing I did so that I could go full time with Jiu-Jitsu. Uh, actually, me and Keelan waited tables at the same place. Another one of our, uh, one of my brown belts, he waited tables there. We uh, had a nice little spot. Oh, Charlie's. The breeding ground for full time BJJ. <laughs> That's crazy. Are you happy? Incredibly. I would say it. I'm way happier than I've ever been. Way less stress in my life than ever. Yeah, it's going really well. Thank you for asking. I hope you're happy. Uh, who asked if I was happy? Gal Val Ty Gorn. I hope you're happy. Tell us some tips before competing, like the day of the gig. So, like some pre-game, you're about to get out there and go. Day of, kind of stuff. Yeah. I think everybody's different, but one thing I learned out of this book called The Art of Learning, it's by a guy named Josh Wade 
Johnson, he talked about having a trigger. So that could be a song, it could be like a, a prayer you recite to yourself, or it could be that you like to slap yourself in the face, or whatever it is, but some kind of trigger. And I would also tell you, dude, take a nap. Take a banana and a pillow and a hoodie and take a nap. Set a timer on your watch or set a timer on your phone. Put some headphones in and settle down. Because you're going to, especially if you're at the stage of your career where you're asking questions like that, you're going to be at these tournaments where you're there all freaking day. And plus, you don't have the experience. You know, you don't have to show up until way later. You know? So, or if you're there with your teammates or whatever, you know, you're there the whole day. That's a rough day, dude. I really hate those days, to be honest with you. Take a pillow, headphones, take them out. This person, kind of the same question-ish. First tournament coming up. Any advice? Be as prepared as possible. Have your cardio ready to go. You know, I mean, you're not going to. You're, I'm assuming you're a white belt at your first tournament. That may not be true. Generally, that's true. So your cardio is not going to be where you need it to be. Learn things about your cardio. Even if you think it's good, you're gonna learn it's not as good as you thought. And you're definitely gonna learn that your technique, you're, you're not gonna be able to help it. You're gonna go harder than you do in the gym, even if you tell yourself, chill out, chill out. So during the course of the match, breathe. Dude, just tell your coach to yell at you to breathe. And if you don't learn anything else in your first competition, learn how to breathe under duress. The result really doesn't matter that much. I want you to win. You want you to win, of course. So go out there and give it your best work. But the real goal is to learn how to compete, not to win. Nobody cares about your results until black belt. And black belt people start caring about it. Some people. Most people don't. <laughs> so, yeah. Just learn how to compete. So go in there with that as your objective. You have to attempt to win give a full attempt to win in order to accomplish that. But uh, the pain of giving an honest effort and losing is crucial. We need that. How important do you feel competition is for BJJ? I think it's I don't want to say it's essential because for sure you can get really good at the art of jiu-jitsu without competing. I think you need to compete to to sharpen your martial arts. So, martial, having to do with war, art, you know, like an, exp an expression of the self or a chosen beauty. I guess maybe that's a good definition. Um, I love the art. I resonate most with the art. The martial, I had to learn to cultivate. And then I like over cultivated it for a while. <laughs> so now, you know, I had to learn to pull it back and find a healthy balance. And, uh, right now in my life, in my martial arts, I have a healthy balance, I feel. Um, but it's, man, I've been training for, for a while. It took me a while to get to a place where I was really comfortable with myself as a practitioner. So, um, anyway, that was my answer to a question that they asked. The original question was, state to me again. How important do you feel competition is for BJJ? Cru crucial to developing a martial arts. That's my point. Crucial to develop a martial art. But, you know, you could be a 70% art, 30% martial kind of guy. And you can be really, really good at Brazilian Jiu Jitsu or anything. But yeah, I think you learn things from competition that you can only learn from competing. You may not need to learn those things. That's an argument that can be made. But I think they're crucial. I don't think you have to make competition the focus of your life. fullest and then go out and fail and know what that hurt feels like and then prepare to their fullest and go out and win and know what that joy feels like and then I think you should prepare poorly and go out and lose and know what that hurt feels like because that's a different kind and then I think you should be able to prepare poorly and go out and win and you need to know that that's empty that that wasn't the of self. So anyway, that's that's what I think. Yeah, I'm an advocate of competition. Do you 
do any funky breathing during rolling. Oh, yeah. I, I go choo choo choo. So, this is something that uh, I originally showed it to me, I believe. I can't remember if it was Carlos Machado or Jean Jacques Machado. But one of them originally showed it to me. And then uh, Hickson, I've been uh, training with Hickson a few times. I don't know Hickson. Hickson doesn't know me. I've just been to some of his training sessions. But he taught the group to do this move for me. But it's an exhale. Best way for a white belt to relax when rolling against higher belts. Also, just joined your site. It's awesome. Oh, awesome. Thanks. Dude, thank you. First of all, what was, what was his name? Brian Keith White. Brian. Thank you, Brian. I really genuinely appreciate that. And if you have anything that you need, I want you to let me know. Give me his question. Best way for a white belt to relax against higher belts when rolling. Woo! Listen, man. You got a lot of getting smashed in front of you. You got a lot of move. You don't even know what to do yet. You know what I mean? Much less to do it well. You don't even know like what the proper response is. So, dude, you gotta start framing properly. Get that Nogi helper that I put out. You're already a member of the site, but this is not on the site. And this is just a free little thing. Um, NogiHelper.com. That's gonna help you to learn to like make the space that you need to be able to breathe and relax a little bit and stop panicking and going for things and then you just need as many hours on the mat as possible it's just a game of who can who can accumulate the most hours in my opinion at this point in my understanding that's what i believe separates people it's not a style of training or whatever necessarily though that is a factor the biggest factor the 80 percent is just who accumulates the most hours resistance not I guess resistance that's important I need to start adding that to the definition who accumulates the most hours against resistance so that's what you need when you develop hours against resistance um would you ever be a UFC trainer I saw I'm on my way to do something like that now I'm assuming that's a uh, Guys from overseas, they say they they say it different. They don't say MMA. They, when they ask me stuff like that, they always say, "Do you train UFC or do you?" So, uh, yeah, that's what we're going to do right now. I work with Eric Anders, and I work with Walt Harris, both who are in the UFC. And every Tuesday and Thursday morning, we go down and we put some work in with those guys. They're really good. This person wants you to upload a video of that breathing stuff to the website. I'm. Yeah, I could do something like that. I think there is something on like one of the old live videos. I might could do something like that later. Uh, it's pretty easy to understand, but listen, I just learned it from other people. Like you can jump on YouTube and just search for like diaphragmatic breathing and you can find you got yoga guys who will teach you how to do it. You know, I learned it from Carlos and Jean Jacques and Hickson, but I could have that. I could have that mix. Jamie asks, "Best place to train when getting ready for Nogi Worlds at the end of the year?" I'm talking about himself. Yeah. This is Jamie from Jamie Houston. Yeah. Best place, like anywhere in the country. Man, there's a 
a lot of great answers to that question. Ten feet Decatur dog. Well, but he said specifically for Nucky World, right? Is he asking or is he saying that we are? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we're not. We're not. We're not the best place in the world to train for Nucky World. I do think that I'm a great place to um, help with your jiu-jitsu. Especially, like, over the long haul. But if you're wanting to compete and win Nogi Worlds at, like, a, say, like, a purple or brown belt level, black belt level, dude, a room like Latos, that's what they specialize in, my God, my man, like, Latos, some other great, there's a lot of great teams. Um, but they would all focus on winning that style of game. That's not necessarily what I focus on. Though I do think it's an important game to know how to play. I don't play it in a way that wins at the highest level. Because it's just not that important to me to win that game at that level. I have other games that I think are more important. Though I do think there's a tremendous amount of value in that game. So. You want any more questions? Uh, no, nah, we got to pull in here. So, thanks, guys. I hope that was helpful to you. Keelan, will you grab this and upload it to YouTube for me? And then let's just add this to the website. Just upload it to YouTube, and then uh, that way it'll be there. So, if you guys need anything, man, just holler at me. Holler at me. Holler at Keelan. If you need somebody that's awesome running the camera, Conscious Keelan is your man.